what they, I'm always singing, Jesus is, I mean, I come on in the room, but I never say in this part, Jesus is my doctor. He writes out all my scriptures. He gives me all my medicine in my room. You know, y'all, I can't get the date right to save my life. One of y'all just pointed out that it's April 4th and not March. God damn it, Quentin. Go back to elementary Spanish class. Fesh a de hoy. Fesh a de hoy, Quentin. What's the date? I always have to go back. Let me turn the fan on. I'm getting hot in here already. I'm going to tell y'all one thing about being sick, bitch. Stomach well. Stomach well, bitch. She gone. Oh, she gone. She gone, bitch. These little bit of pounds that I lost, I take it. I will take it. I will take it. I will take it. Uh, so for those of y'all who may not know what all the hell, what's what's going on, camera? Let's see what's going on. Whatever. We just going to rock with it. For Let's see here. I mean, we get virtual background. Have, okay. Have a green screen. And hold on. We're going to put this prostitute back in the bag. Why this hat acting like this? Oh, well, we just going to have to work with what we got. I don't know why. Let me go change hats. I don't know why this hat acting like this. All right, I guess we're going to have to work with what we got. Anyway, y'all, I'm here. Let me go ahead and give y'all a warning. Uh, you know, my chest is still congested. I may have to run off the camera and cough up some phlegm or whatever the case may be. But for those of y'all who don't know, I went to the strip club and not only did them nasty whores goop me out of $2,000, they left me with some reverse Chinese flu that I don't wish on anybody. I was down bad, so bad last night. I had to call the, mo the mobile nursing unit to my house and they came and gave me two liters of fluids and put all the, the, the medicine and stuff in it. I woke up this morning feeling better. And as the day progressed, I was able to, you know, eat and kind of move around. My breath is still a little labored or whatever, but I figured, I know a lot of y'all told me to get some rest, but I'm one of those people that I think Sometimes when you sick and you just be laying up in the bed, I think that makes it worse sometimes that if you are able to get up and try to move around, at least to get up and try to move around a little bit. And it's not like the work that I have to do here is road construction or, or, or retiling the roof. I'm sitting here. So thanks to all of y'all who've been praying for me. Uh, F-U-C-K, all of y'all talking about fucking that nigga always sick. Y'all always sick and tired of y'all effing with me, okay? This, <laughs> them other times, I was lying just to get a day off of work like y'all be doing. But let me see, but you see how the universe and God to get you when you be lying. Y'all, you see, y'all be trying to hold me to a standard that y'all don't even hold y'all own selves to. How many of y'all ass call in work sick or lie on your kids talking about my baby in here running a fever. I can't come in today, but you want to judge me. Okay. The only difference between my job and yours is somebody could watch your phone lines for the day while you out and can't nobody watch mine. Okay. Want to do me. You want to do me. Y'all some old, y'all black people so disrespectful. I can't stand y'all. Y y y listen, y'all know I quit a job in a heartbeat. Keep messing with me and I quit this shit. <laughs> I quit this shit. Okay. Uh, before we get started, y'all, when I was going through the topics, I was uh, scrolling through Instagram and Roland Martin had put a post up and he said at 701 today in 1968, a bullet struck Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, 
And it just made me pause like, wow, today is the day Dr. Martin Luther King was shot. And when you start factoring in how old, especially I'm 40, if you're in my age bracket, when you start factoring in how old our parents are and how old our grandparents are, especially those of us whose parents and grandparents are still living, they were still alive and can probably still tell you what was going through their minds when they got the news. 1968 was not that long ago, y'all. It was not that long ago. And so it just it just gave me pause um, um, when I saw when I saw it. So salute to Dr. King, the King family, and, and all that he's done for our uh community. Moving right along. Y'all wanted me to talk. Listen, listen, the economy is messing people up from the old to the young. You know it's bad when an 11, a 12, and a 16-year-old rob a bank in Houston. Child, because they are underage, the news and the and the government, the, the, the media, I mean, the, the news and the authorities are not releasing their names and it's just referring to them as the little rascals. But child, they don't went into Houston to the Wells Fargo and handed the lady a note, baby, and walked out with the people money. This thing is funny to me. I guess they said they got sick and tired of seeing mama sitting on the side of the bed um, crying about how she was going to make rent and all these various other things. They said they was going to take things in their own hands and rob the bank. But I'm going to tell you something. Is it me? Or am I the only one who feels like a 16-year-old should not be hanging out with no 11 and no 12-year-old? I don't give a good goddamn what nobody say. The 16-year-old masterminded this. There is nothing a 16-year-old has in common with an 11 and a 12-year-old. Now, here is how it works, right? Like, when we in elementary school, like, it's cool for, like, the fifth graders to play with, like, the first graders. And maybe they were siblings, so let's just go with that assumption. Uh, you know, when we're in elementary school, it's cool that the fifth graders interact with the second graders to a degree because you know, we're all in the same grade. When we live on the block, it's all right that, you know, the 14-year-old is playing with the 11-year-olds because they all grew up together on the block. But then it just becomes a certain, it's like, bam, like we, we, when you hit high school, you, you drive as ed age. When you hit that 16, you shouldn't be playing with the 11-year-olds and the 12-year-olds. And even if your siblings, um, I don't know. They're still, I mean, I remember me and my siblings and we grew up in the household together. We're all four years apart. And there just still was a certain degree of separation. Like I remember my, my sister, when I hit high school, she was like in her last year, we're four years apart. So when I hit ninth grade, she was in her last year of, of, of elementary school. Um, it, it's just like, you know, we just kind of naturally like went our own ways because what is the high schooler talking about with the elementary schooler? It's just weird. But y'all know this 16-year-old made they ass do this. Um, or oh, that's what you said. The 12-year-old masterminded that the 16-year-old was on the spectrum. Or the 16-year-old is developmentally 10. Okay, well then, that, that makes it make sense. Nevertheless, if we have to find the silver lining in all of this, uh, I can't even believe I'm finna say this. I'm glad that they are children and that they'll get a blemish on their record and, um, you know, they won't get in a whole, 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 whole bunch of trouble. Um, you know, I respect the fact that the parents of two of the kids actually turned their ass into the FBI. I guess after the way Diddy House got raided, the people say, baby, we already working with the little bit that we got you not finna come in here and kick what little piece of dough I got in and, and have my papers all across the room and all across the house and so on and so forth. They said, let me go ahead and call down here to the FBI. Matter of fact, mom and daddy said, we we, we was looking for a break. And since they not passing reparations, what better way to get rid of y'all ass than to send y'all ass to jail? Y'all to get medical treatment, three hots in the cot. Sound like a win for me. Shouts out to all the parents who do the right thing. Riddle me this, y'all. If y'all found out 
that y'all kids had did something, um, you know, something like this, um, and that, you know, they could have potentially gotten away with it if you didn't identify them. Would you protect your child by way of, like, not turning them in, or would you turn them in? I think it takes a lot of courage for parents to turn their children in, uh, especially because I'm sure, and I'm not a parent, but I'm sure your first inclination is to coddle and hide and protect and cover your doggone child. Um, but mama say, you ain't finna kick my dough in. Uh, you see the way they tow up Diddy House and we ain't even got Diddy type of money. Hell, our roof already leaking and the toilet already been running for the last four months. Got the water beer high as all hell. And you think them people finna come in here and raid our house? Now, I went through the video because I was trying to make sure they wasn't black. I was only able to make out one of the kids, and he wasn't black. He was either white or Hispanic. Now, I don't know about the other two. Uh, something about the, the fact that it was in Houston tells me that one of them probably was black or the other two was probably black. Summer Speak says they would have to find my black son. <laughs> Summer, you used to be a booster back in the day. I can't really tell by your tone. Anyway, moving right along. Ex-bad boy artist g Depp just got released from prison after 13 years for murder. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm a different kind of black person. I'm not a free my nigga Tony black person. I'm not a picture on the t-shirt black person. I am not a throwing parties for when people get out of prison and jail, black person. I'm just not because your ass shouldn't have been in there in the first place. I don't say this to be an insult to anybody, but I can respectfully say I don't have any of that in my family. All right. We I don't we don't have nobody that went to prison and that don't make this is on my mama's side and my daddy's side. And this don't make us better than nobody. And I'm not trying to say we are. I'm simply saying I don't know nothing about that. I don't know nothing about people going to prison. I don't know nothing about having to go sit in no court while people get tried and convicted. I don't know nothing about having to go visit nobody in jail or in prison. I don't know. If you if you told me to call and put something on your books today or tomorrow, I would not even know where to begin. The only reason why I know the phrase J-Pay or jail pay is because Brianna Perry sung it in a song. I don't come from that type of stock of people. So when I look at all this, free my nigga Tony, and ah, whatever, 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 he come from prison, I don't know how to celebrate that. All right? Now, I'm human enough to understand that if it was my loved one and someone that I cared about and that they got released from wherever they were for 13 years, that I probably would be excited. I am human enough to understand that emotion. But here is what I'm going to tell you um, from g -Dep, what I want. What I want from g -Dep is absolutely nothing. I want nothing from you. g -Dep, you just got released from prison for 13 years for murder. Whether you did it, whether you didn't, whether you knew about it, whether you took the rap for somebody, go sit your ass down. All right, I saw a video. Your first meal was a meal from IHOP. I am glad, brother, that you got you some IHOP. Go sit your ass down. Do not come out here and try to jump on the relevancy train. We don't want to hear what your thoughts are on Diddy, and you don't damn kill some damn body or, or, or involved with killing some damn body or drove the getaway car, whatever the hell you did, because I didn't care enough about the story to go read and figure out exactly what the hell he did. We don't want to hear nothing from you. I think that you need to count it on joy, and you need to be happy and grateful that the universe and the Lord gave you a second chance at life. Do not come out and get involved in all this stuff. And you know what? I know that my 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 speech is falling on deaf ears because what do you do when you when you're a convicted felon and you don't really have any ways of making money? You run your ass over there to Vlad TV and all these other people 
who are willing to pay you for an interview. And I don't know if Vlad pay for interviews. I'm just saying you run to whoever that will give you a platform. And if they give you a check, it makes it even better. But GDEP, we really don't want to hear anything from you. And whatever you do know is 13 years stale. And Cassie don't gave us everything we know that needed to be curtain. Let me tell y'all something. They say they, they say hell have no fury like a woman scorn. Let me tell you something. Cassie Ventura is synonymous for nasty work. Now, I thought, I thought when you take a plea deal, I mean, or settlement with somebody, that that means you take your money and you go sit your ass to hell down and you go sail into the sunset. Now, I can't confirm or deny, but the blogs are saying Cassie ass has been working with the feds. Let me tell y'all something, you men out there. That's my ginger root and lemon. Y'all told me to boil the honey. Let me tell you something for you men out there. Any of you men out there that have been doing an iota of what Cassie went through with Diddy, I am here to let y'all know that mama has given women the roadmap on how to get their vindication. Your ass better get to burning videos, deleting stuff, deleting bank records, moving her ass out the house nicely, keeping her on payroll. You better do what all you need to do because Cassie didn't just burn the house down. She burned the land. Like, you know, most times when people burn the house down, you bring a construction crew in and they could just, uh, you know, sweep up all the rubble and you could rebuild on the land. Baby, Cassie scorched the land. The land ain't even no good no more, y'all. The land won't grow shit. The land won't grow weeds, grass. The dirt ain't strong enough to sustain the foundation of a new house. Baby, they say the land got so many holes and craters in it that you can see the Zephyr Hills up under it. Baby, they say the land is radioactive like Chernobyl, bitch. Okay, she burnt it down. If land had white meat, if land had white meat, Cassie burnt the land down to the white meat. Matter of fact, National Geographic need to carry their ass round Puffy House to figure out what type of mineralized soil this is over here. The fact that it ain't even create no sinkhole and suck in the whole Beverly Hills and the whole Star Island and Miami Beach, baby, the land ain't even no good. Baby, even Lake Lanier haunted land is better than the damage that Cassie done did to this man land. Baby, even the, the old slave plantation land is better than the land that Cassie done did to this man. Like, can, can, with, listen, I don't know what type of voodoo that mama did, but she reached that deep down to the ancestors, baby. She, whoo, let me tell you something. If I happen to be in the mall and I see Cassie parking in the valet, bitch, I'm running. They could keep my whole damn car. I ain't even got enough time to wait. I don't want to cross paths with Black Cat Mamba because whatever type of hoodoo voodoo that mama got that could scorch the land to the point where the land is worthless, I don't want that by me. Cassie, you did that, girl. You did, baby, you did that. Excuse me, y'all. Cassie did that, baby. That land is worthless. They might as well go ahead and make that land tent city. Y'all can go ahead and move some of the people off of Skid Row and take them right over there to that useless land in Beverly Hills because Cassie made sure when she was done wasn't shit left. Don't nobody want it. It can't sell. It, you, can't <coughs> <coughs> you can't auction the shit off and see... Her spirit don't got in me telling me to move on. Let me move the hell on. Um, this is something that I want to talk about, and I'm going to take my time with this. In this story, black moms, I, I need y'all to talk about that. All my heterosexual black men, I need y'all to listen to me. Rod Wave was arrested for possession of ammunition by a convicted felon. All right. 
Rod Wave. Now, my little nieces and nephews that live in Tampa, they the ones who put me on the Rod Wave. Every time I go around their house, uh, DJ and Brianna and my other nep- my other niece, Muffin, from Tunica, Mississippi, we, when we was all uh, chilling and kicking it, they wanted me to put on Rod Wave. So now I feel, listen, I would have never thought that children under the age of like 12 would make me cool. So they went, they were like, Uncle Quentin, put on a great Gatsby and Heart Like Ice and a couple other songs. I mean, and they just know all the words. And, you know, I know that that used to be me and my siblings. So I was like, I, I, they don't know it. I be listening to them. I be listening to it when they don't be around. So the next time we get together, I can feel cool and not feel as old as I look with all these grays in my beard or whatever. But I, I later found out that Rod Wave is from that Tampa, Clearwater, St. Pete area. So that will also explain why my nieces and nephews who live in Tampa uh, probably have a bit more exposure to him because he's from the area and I'm sure that they show him love. Sonia Richardson, I'm sick, bitch. I don't need you correcting my grammar, whether or rather. Ho, oh, you know what I was talking about. Now, if you want to go be an English teacher somewhere, how about you go somewhere and edit my ass? Okay, how about you take your red pencil and you edit my ass after you kiss it? Okay, I'm like Lori Hill. Um, you, you, your ass lucky I showed up to work today. Now you want to sit up here and critique me for grammar? Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm sick. When I'm sick, I ain't got no morals and no values, baby. I cut your ass out down to the ground and leave the earth up under you, scorched like Cassie did, Diddy. Now, now do it again. Do it again. If you bad as you said you is, do it again. Coming in here messing with me. (laughs) You know I'm just playing, friend. But anyway, he got um, charged with, you know, possession of ammunition by a convicted felon. Let me first... I'm trying to be sensitive here. And again, I'm not trying to be elitist when I reiterate that I'm not the most hood person. I'm not. I just don't understand what this affinity is with young black men and guns and ammunition and weapons and lean and all of these different things that just to the normal person who was raised in a relatively decent environment, it's a simple hell no. It really baffles me more when you are a celebrity and you've got these things going on. I mean, like, riddle me this. I don't claim to be the smartest person in the world, but I think I'm pretty level-headed and rational. You are a celebrity, sir. Can you please give me an instance where you're going to be in a situation where you need to shoot up somebody. You live in a nice neighborhood or in a nice building. You have security wherever it is you go. They walk you in and out of back doors when you go places. What is this infatuation that our black boys, our black young men have with guns and ammunition and 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 I don't get it and I'm trying my hardest not to judge educate me here is it a status thing like does it make them cool amongst their peers that they got an AK47 in their house and they got a 9 millimeter on their waist because again who you about to shoot Who are you about to shoot? And it's so funny. It took a friend of mine, my friend Derek, to point out to me. I always carried myself with the belief that hood and ratchetness was something that people wanted to run away from, right? That that I thought that everybody carried themselves with the mentality that being hood is a bad thing and you want to elevate. And he pointed out to me that just like some people want to be rich and famous, that being hood and ratchet has become a lifestyle and it's become aspirational to some people. 
which is very dangerous, by the way. It's, it's, it's very dangerous, by the way. But we live in a society now where be, the more hood you are, the more aspirational it is. And I, I, I could just never foresee a world where I escape whatever background I come from, whether it's a middle class background or a poor project background, and I come into millions of dollars or hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, but yet I perpetrate this life like the people who are struggling and having to sell drugs and shoot up people to survive. It just doesn't make sense for me. And I'm not judging the people who live that life for real because I understand that it's one of the many vestiges of systematic oppression and one of the many vestiges of poverty. Poverty breeds crime. I get that. And I, I, I actually am, am willing and able to work through the psychology of the person who's just trying to feed their family. But I cannot wrap my head around these that make it out, but still want to shoot dice on the corner with your boys. And I understand that there's there has to be a tempering off period, right? Like I was shooting dice with y'all on Monday. I signed my record deal on Friday. By the next Monday, I got a million dollars in my account. I'm not expecting you to just cut your homeboys off that you've been with for, 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 for 23 years. I'm not expecting you to just cut them off cold turkey. But there just becomes a point where the money alone should be en enough to cloud your head to the point where it's like, yeah, I'm different from them and I don't have to live the life that they live no more. And who gives a damn what they think of me? They ain't got shit. And they all want to be me. And I'm going to help who I can help and I'm going to help who I think got the mentality to take the help. And the rest of them Negroes that's on the corner shooting dice, I got to leave them where they at. That's, that, that's just the way I think. And I feel like being in that environment, you should know how Negroes think when you got money and they don't. And maybe I just answered the question. Maybe that's why they tote guns and ammunition. But the way you fix that is stop going to the damn hood. Stop going to the hood. I love 50 Cent. 50 Cent said, fuck the hood. The hood ain't never did nothing for me. I love that quote. Um, speaking of hood, you know, I try to let the sexy reds and the Sukiyanas be. I understand that although I may not come from that, some of everybody deserve representation, I guess. No, that, that's me being overly fair and overly being liberal. I'm sorry. Let me tell the truth. Um, I, I don't believe that people, oh, that's a dangerous statement that I'm about, about to make. The statement that I was about to make was, I don't believe people like Sukiyana and Sexy Red deserve representation, but that's not fair, right? Like that, that, that's not fair because everybody comes from different backgrounds and everybody deserves to see themselves represented in the media somehow. I just wish there was a way that the powers that be, when we do pluck out the, the Sukiyanas and the Sexy Reds, that we put them on an aspirational track to show girls you can make it out and do better, not make money, but stay the same mentally. And with that being said, the story that I want to talk about is Sexy Red took to the internet and was going to fuck off because school officials would not let her in the school to speak to the kids because she smelled like weed. She smelled like weed. Now, here's the thing. I ain't even mad with Sexy Red. I am not mad with Sexy Red because Sexy Red is doing and thinking on the wavelength that Sexy Red is capable of doing and thinking on. She said she came out there to give the kids the word of the day. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be very honest with you. If I worked down to the district office, if I worked down to the district office and I caught wind of the fact that Sexy Red was even booked to come to the school, everybody from the principal to the teacher in the graphic design class who made the flyer to announce her appearance, to the PTA moms that knew this was happening and didn't protest it, would be fired. Okay? Would be fired. The mature side of me is, is, is growing to the place 
where I'm able to make allowances for people like Sexy Red existing, okay? But she needs to exist in spaces where adults are capable of discerning that this is entertainment and not real life. I am sorry, but there is no reason on God's green earth that Sexy Red, Sukiana, Cardi B, Krishan Rock, um, they should not be speaking at schools. What is Sexy Red? Uh, riddle me this. When the principal gets on the microphone and the school mascot says, and the moment y'all been waiting for, Sexy Red! And the students stand up in the gymnasium and clap. What are you playing in the background as she walks out? Bend that ass over, let that coochie breathe. And then all the girls are twerking with their coochie spread to the red, to the pink meat in the gymnasium. I, I'm, I'm just not understanding. What adult thought that it was a good idea to book Sexy Red to come to a school? And I am all for trying to reach the children where they at. You, you know, we got to be cool and we got to do these types of things. You know, I understand that. But there had to be um, a, 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 another artist that could have garnered the same type of attention from the children than Sexy Quiet as a Skep. I would have rather y'all went and got Azalea Banks crazy ass. At least she got damn sense. Um, uh, you know, th th these days and times, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I would have been okay with you going to get in Black China. You know, at least her story could have been, girls, you don't have to be promiscuous. I did all these types of things back in the day. You know, it looked fun, but it wasn't. Look where I'm at now. You know what I'm saying? Um... I know Glorilla got some rough songs. I'm old. I don't know all her stuff. Um, you know, I just don't know how somebody thought sexy. And what did you think? What I mean, listen, there were only two options of what Sexy Red was going to, three options. She was going to smell like weed. She was going to smell like sex. Or she was going to smell like Victoria's Secret body spray, in particular that pink one. Those were the only three things that she was going to smell like. <laughs> and all three of them is bad. I don't know if that pink Victoria's Secret body spray is worse than smelling like weed, dick and ass, quiet as a skip. Y'all yeah, know which one I'm talking about. And this is going to be some offended hoes on here that still wear it. If you wearing that pink Victoria's Secret body spray and that bath and body, works, uh, body stuff, go, go flush that shit down the toilet. Go flush that shit down the toilet. There's nobody who should be within the age bracket of being able to comprehend the content that I make that's still wearing this stuff from Victoria's Secret. Go pour that stuff in the toilet. First of all, shouldn't nobody this age be wearing body spray, okay? Nobody should be wearing... Nobody that's old enough to understand and get jiggy with Funky Dineva should be wearing body spray. We 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 wear um what is it anti de perfume, you know anti de toilet okay bitch ain't nobody wearing no um Kool Aid in no container ain't nobody wearing no Kool Aid in no container sis and then be spraying that shit on all day having us all in the workplace nose congested and we be coughing and sneezing like it's fifty cats running through the damn office space go pull that shit out. And you ain't even gotta you ain't even gotta do it publicly. Just when you get off the line, just go pull it out. And if you got some sitting on your desk at the office tomorrow, just put it in your bag. And when you go on lunch, throw that shit in the dumpster. Don't nobody that ooh, good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Body spray. What what even is that? Excuse me, y'all.
What even is that? Like, I'm going to tell y'all what I think it is. I think when the high-end perfume people, when they finish making the perfume and they bottle it all, the pot, the pot that they cook the perfume in, I think they just add water and alcohol to that and let the residual just get in there. Y'all be going around spraying it all over y'all self. Y'all be going around spraying it all over y'all self. And I'm going to, oh, excuse me. Mm. Excuse me, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Watch out, I'm sick. Got to work with me. And while we on the subject of things that y'all need to get rid of, if you still using spritz or any type of styling gel, go ahead and throw that stuff away too. If you using spritz and styling gel, pump it up and lie the body. And, and all, just throw that stuff away. and Because it, it's it's always like a body spray girl is a spritz and a lot of body girl. They, they, they just the same person. Eco style gel. They, they, they the same person. They the same person. A body spray girl is a spritz girl. A body spray girl is a spritz girl. And then be thinking that she the T because she got her in contacts and went to belts and got her a Michael Kool's purse. It, they, they, they the same girl. I guess, honey. I'm going to let you have it. Let me get up off the girls for the girls. Get mad, honey. Just, just go natural. But you're going to have to pick a struggle, bitch. You can't have spritz, styling gel, body spray. Uh... And all that type of shit. Nene Leaks and Carlos King, they did a video riding in the car and they talked about respectful cheating. And this is going to be very interesting. You know, um, we're adults here. <sighs> I don't think that anybody who loves their significant other wants to wrap their head around the idea that their lover, you know, may cheat on them, may be out there cheating on them. And I don't think that there's any sane person out there that would say out loud, I'm okay with respectful cheating because it almost sounds like you're giving your person a hall pass to cheat. However, just being grown and understanding human behavior and psychology, I do understand. I do understand the psychology behind I don't want to know. I'm grown enough to understand the psychology of I don't want to know. Um, and it's weird, and I and and I I, I tell y'all this rarely am I double minded, but I honestly think that you would be playing yourself if you thought that you were going to be in relationship with somebody for 20, 30, 40 years and that they were never going to touch another human being. I just think that's a very erroneous way of thinking. Um, are there people out there who are able to be faithful for 30, 40, 50 years? Sure. I just don't think that that's the average human being and I think that goes for men and women. You guys always hear me say, um, 
when you love somebody, it's your job to protect them. A lot of people feel like, you know, oh, you know, when you love somebody, it's all about total and complete honesty and so on and so forth. And, and I beg to differ. Um, you know, there are certain situations and I, I, I was raised by real old school women. There are certain situations where you have to sit back and ask yourself, what good is the truth going to do me? What good is the truth going to do me? Uh, other than tear up my fairy tale, tear up my life, tear up my self-esteem, and I'm not going nowhere. So what good is the truth going to do me in that instance? And that's just some real grown woman shit. Again, not giving no hall pass um, for the other person to cheat. But I will say this. Nobody wants their person to cheat. Nobody wants their person to cheat. But if your person did cheat, like, have enough decency to protect me. Don't let your patterns change. Don't let the finances in our house change. Don't let the way you interact with me and the kids change. Don't have me looking stupid in these doggone streets. Don't have people laughing at me. Don't put my health in jeopardy. You know what I'm saying? So while I hate the argument and the conversation around respectful cheating, I'm also grown enough to understand that things do happen. Things do happen. And if something is going to happen, then there needs to be some protocol behind how it happens. Now, I see some of y'all putting the Martell and Melody thing in the, in the comment box. That's how you know Martell didn't give a hell about Melody. Because he cheated all out in her face. Now, let's take Tisha and Marceau, for example. Y'all, you know, want to swear up and down that, uh, that, that, that Tisha, that Marceau was cheating on Tisha. And child, we all feel that way to a degree. But I'm going to tell y'all something. He got a vasectomy to make sure, A, he ain't had no kids on her like Martell did. B, ain't no woman come around her house and knock on her door. And C, ain't nobody came out. So all, all she got is a bunch of speculation from a bunch of cackling hens. I'm trying to think who else got cheated on the right way. Who else got cheated on the right way? Oh, y'all messy talking about Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Damon. I don't know, but I will say this. If in the event that Dr. Damon has cheated on Dr. Heavenly, he did it the right way. Somebody put the Dixons. Child, Juan don't want Robin. And now that she don't work for the Real Housewives of Potomac no more, you watch her see it. And his basketball stuff ain't going as good as it need to be going. Uh, Robin and Juan will be getting a divorce pretty soon. Um, Y'all talking about Cecil. Cecil didn't cheat on Simone. He was just having intimate. He 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 was just, he just preferred being around Tammy more than he did being around Simone. No, Jackie and Curtis ain't do it the right way because Curtis had his hand all around the woman at the airport. See, y'all getting messy. We will not have no LeBron and Savannah slander in this thing. We will not have any uh, Beyonce and Jay-Z slander in this thing. We finna move the hell on. I'm simply saying that things happen. And this is just a big boy and a big girl conversation that we got to have. Like, if you think that you've been married to your man for 40 years, your girl for 40 years, and they ain't touched nobody else, um, good for you. Good for you. And I'm happy that that person put you in a situation to feel that way. And that, that that's all we're saying here. I'm glad that that person put you in a situation to feel that way. We, we've been together. I, I think it's an honor when a person is able to stand up and say with their whole chest, we've been, together, we've been together for 40 years and there has been no infidelity in our marriage. That is the way it is supposed to be. All right? And let's move right along. Um, the last thing on the list, y'all, 
Um, Latasha Scott threatens legal action against the girls over the name Escape because she trademarked the name or whatever. Oh, Lord. You know, I, I've just never seen someone who lacks self-awareness to the point where they just continue to make things harder and harder and harder and harder for themselves. Escape seems to be more of a powerhouse and a profit center now than they have ever been. Latasha, stop wasting your time. All the girls have to do is call themselves EX3, formerly known as Escape, to circumvent all of this. With social media, everybody knows they could call themselves uh, Candy, Tamika, and Tiny and still sell. It's not like they're garnering new fans, all right? The people who are coming out to see the current escape, we old hoes that know them. They could call themselves Little House on the Prairie and we still going to know it's the escape. So what are you doing, sis? You are the one who distanced yourself from the group. You came through while everybody was on some unity and harmony type stuff, you came through trying to be Beyonce. It didn't work for you. And instead of humbling yourself and doing whatever it is you need to do to slowly get back with the good graces with the girls, you want to double down on wrongness and then bring the law into it. Like, you, you are, are a sad, sick person. And not sick in a bad way, like sick in like a really mentally unstable way, sis. And at one point, we were blaming it on Rocky, and I still think that Rocky is a big major influence on you. But, but like, L Latasha, what's your reasoning behind this? You ditched the group. Not once, but twice. You ditched the group. Whether you owe the trademark to the name or not, what is your objective in this go in in this moment? You 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 now want to come back, or you know since you're not making no money, you don't want them to make no money. Like, what is your objective here? Quiet as it's kept, you need to be concerned about selling them sixty thousand boxes worth of them gospel CDs that's stinking up your garage that don't nobody damn want. Okay, you need to be more concerned about that. Like, start going to the farmer's market and selling mango salad and giving people a free CD. Real grassroots, like, real NAACP, like, and maybe it, it'll get your music out there. Like, I, I really don't know what to tell you, but picking fights with the girls is just not... I've just never seen somebody so blinded by dumb. As if you threatening legal action with use of the name is going to change anything. All they're going to do is change the name and keep touring, and it's going to further put you on the outs. Now you never going to be able to come back because you know that Candy Burris hold the grudge down to the ground, and her position is going to be not only did you leave the group, but you tried to prevent us from making money, and now that we hot, you want to come back. Oh, hell no. At this point, Tasha, I honestly think that your goal at this point should be finding peace and what life that you have left to live. And I think that peace for you uh, lies outside of the entertainment industry. I think that peace for you, <coughs> excuse me, I think that peace for you should look like reunifying your family making amends with your family, going to therapy, healing whatever you need to heal in your marriage, a.k.a. leaving his ass. Um, I think peace for you looks like acknowledging where you have went wrong, not once but twice. Um, and finding something else to do. And if for you it's all about singing, then go to church and sing. Do session work, sing back, background work, or, you know, go get with Farah and Latavia 
and y'all form a girl group or something, go get the 702 girls or black. I mean, I really don't know what to tell you at this point, but it's just, it's very weird to me that anybody with two eyes and a half a brain can see that this is just not the right move to make. And you keep making the wrong moves. Like, sis, what is wrong? What is what is wrong? I, I feel I weep for you. I really do weep for you because I just can't see somebody just being this stupid. I can't see somebody being this stupid and it's sad. And we like you, Latasha, and we're rooting for you. And you are one of the best voices in Escape. You are one of the most unique voices out there. You, you know, we do want your music, but baby, we, we we want it the right way and not with all this other stuff that you got going on. Y'all, I didn't think I had enough content to make it 51 minutes through, but I did. I pushed through it. I, didn't, I, don't, I don't feel too, too bad. I'm still got a little bit of headache and whatnot. Uh, thank you all 9,173 of y'all that are rocking with me right now through sickness. I, I, all I ask is that y'all give me 9,175 prayers. And y'all drop something in the little cash app collection box to keep me motivated and to keep me going. Thank y'all so much. Uh, joining y'all tonight really did help me. It, it was better than me sitting up in the bed all night feeling sorry for myself. Like my man don't left me like like he like he had did Bernadine or whatever. In 11 years I sacrificed and you're going to leave me at the drop of a dime. So thank y'all for this and good night. <laughs>